Okay, so let's get started. Um, I only need to tell you about one more new thing. Everything else um, we've pretty much done. I do want to do more practice at the stuff we've learned, particularly applying it to circuits with inductors and capacitors as well as resistances. So I should have moved that down here, right? So um, what I want to try and do today is finish off the superposition lab. Um, just in case you didn't get the right measurements, I hope you know now what the right measurements should be. Particularly the, the hard bit is figuring out what voltage to set the current supply at, right, in order to get 5 milliamps in that branch. So on this page, In fact, the only, maybe there's two things. The only t two technical things I want need to talk about are three phase circuits and transients. Uh, AC circuit analysis is what we're doing. So I probably should have highlighted that. RC and RL circuits is what we're doing. I should have highlighted that. The other thing we need to do is, on the lab side of things, figure out how to use a function generator and how to use an oscilloscope. Right? They're the two things up here that we haven't used yet. That's an oscilloscope. And that's a function generator. I'm really amazed that the function generator has a bigger screen than the uh, the oscilloscope. But anyway, I haven't. These are new pieces of equipment, so I haven't uh, I haven't used them yet. So we might have to figure that out. In fact, I might do that today. So there's a tutorial out on the front if you didn't get it when you came in. Um, I want to do that today. What I thought I'd do first is um, uh, talk about the lab, the superposition lab, talk about the, in fact I think I forgot to update that one, talk about the other lab I want to do today. Don't think I'm going to talk about transients and AC circuits. Oh, sorry, three-phase circuits um, today. I'll leave that until next week. Um, I do want to spend some time going back over everything else we've done, but with the with the lens of now we've got impedances rather than resistances. Okay. So let me uh, So these are the notes that I wrote the other day and Remember, this is superposition, so we've got to replace the voltage source with its ideal, which is a, a wire, and then replace the current source with its ideal, which is an open circuit. So, the quest, as I said, the question is, what do we... We can't actually... We don't actually have a power supply that's a current source. So we need to figure out what voltage to apply there to get 
5 milliamps through the 560 ohm resistor, right? And it's pretty straightforward. You just um, figure out what the equivalent resistance is. So it's 1200 in parallel with 270 in series with 560. I think it comes out to about 780 ohms. And then we just multiply the 780 ohms by the 5 milliamps and we get 3.9 volts. I also did a, a short video. Let me see if I can find that. I forgot to uh, copy the... Um, I forgot to copy the uh, LT Spice files over. Now where did I do the video? There we go. Frame set superposition. Right, if you'll excuse my head, um, I'm eating the, uh, I moved it away a little bit. Yeah, let's try that one. Right, so what I did in LT Spice is I made the original circuit. And then I made the circuit without the current supply. Bless you. I made the circuit without the voltage supply. And then I simulated them. Right. So one way to get the voltages is to do the analysis. Another way to get the voltages is to run this sort of a simulation in L um, in L T spice. Another way is to set up the circuit, put a an ammeter, the the digital multimeter measuring current, in between the power supply and the 560 ohm resistor measure what the current is and change the voltage until you get 5 milliamps. Right? So there's several ways to get it. Does anybody have any questions about the superposition lab? We okay with the lab? You, you're okay? Yeah? So the main thing is to get, let me see if I can, uh, do that, and then come back here. No, it's not letting me paste. There we go. Right, so the main thing is you want the current through R1, the current through R3, the current through R2, and with those definitions of current direction, you want the voltages across each of the resistors. Now you may have defined the directions of the current differently. That's okay. Um, just make sure that that's another big issue, right? You're going to change the, the circuit. So you want to make sure that all of these current directions are the same 
for the 1200 ohm resistor in all three circuits that the current direction for the 270 ohm is the same for all three circuits and the current direction for R3 the 560 ohm is the same in all three circuits otherwise you'll get a a minus or a plus where you get a plus or a minus no? as long as you're consistent it should all work out okay um, so there's that one let me just go back here Right, so I wanted to finish up. Um, I was going to do the lab first, but I don't know whether we want to do what we normally do and do the lab second. Do the lab second? Yeah? Okay. So, in that case, that way, if you've already got all the measurements you need, you can bug out. Um, so let's, let's talk about the tutorial. Okay, so this tutorial is a, an introduction to RL and C stuff. The first one is just about, uh, finding impedances, given the different devices, the only thing you've got to remember is ZC equals 1 on J omega C and Z, oops, and ZL is J omega L and finally omega equals 2 pi F where F is the frequency in Hertz Okay. Sorry. No problem. So there shouldn't be anything too untoward in any of this. notice the first four have extremely large values right you normally wouldn't come across a 10 farad capacitor a 10 farad capacitor is in the range of a super capacitor they, they certainly exist but most capacitors are in the pico to microfarad range And then 10 Henry is also a pretty big inductor. Perhaps not as <coughs> out there as a, uh, a 10 farad capacitor is. So we'll have a go at that one. Can I move on? Yeah. So here's a simple mesh circuit, right? And notice the polarity, right? So we'd probably want to, uh, I don't know, maybe we want to, I normally, without any knowing anything else, I normally go clockwise. So and it's just a matter of applying mesh analysis. There's no frequency given here. That's because the 
impedances for the capacitor and the inductor have already been All, yeah, all I was going to say is um, remember that uh, one way to do V is to use the exponential way of writing V to get V as a complex number. And here's another mesh analysis one, slightly more complicated. We've got a current source in microamps. And again, we, we haven't given the, uh, we haven't given the frequency. So the, uh, the voltage and the current supplies are just given as polar numbers. 5 angle 30 degrees for volts and 400 angle 45 degrees in microamps. And then the last question here is question 4. So solve using, using nodal analysis. And this time we've got two voltage sources. So this one should be relatively straightforward, right? We've got two voltage sources and they're both connected between the reference and a node. So we end up only having one unknown because we can write down what VA and VC are directly. Again, the trick is to make sure you get the current directions defined. And I tend to want to have at least one node where all the currents are flowing in. It doesn't matter. You may prefer to do something different. That is okay, provided you're consistent. Okay, so I suggest you uh, tackle that, and uh, I'll be here. I'll walk around the room and see if anybody has any questions. So start at question one. That should be uh, relatively straightforward. And I'll maybe give... Uh, Let's make it 10 minutes. I'll make put a timer on my, my phone. And in about 10 minutes, I'll get you to tell me what the answers are. We'll see if we can come to some consensus for question one, then we'll move on to question two.
Can I have a sip of coffee outside? Taste anything in the studio.
Okay, so let's uh, see about answering some of these. Let me. Uh, who we've got Anna can you tell us uh, what you got for question one or oh, one one three point one eight three Yeah, so there's a couple of things missing there. So let's have a look. 10 farad at 500 hertz. Uh, so let's do a new script. So C1 is 10 farads. Omega 1 is 500 hertz times 2 times pi. And CC1 is going to be 1 on J omega 1 C1. And let's uh, call this tutorial for Q1. Right, so first thing is it's going to be negative. Whenever you see a, whenever you see a capacitor, the sign on the impedance is going to be negative. Right, because this is the same as minus J on omega C. Right because 1 on j is negative j. So then when it did 2, there we go. So then it's... So omega 1... Well, it's there already, right? Omega 1 is... Uh, 3,141.6 radians per second. So times uh, 10. Did I get that right? So 10. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so it's going to be a minus J. And by 10 to the minus 5. So you could write it as that and then the units are going to be ohms. But I would tend to use engineering notation, right? So try and get it to a, a power of 6, or sorry, power of 3. So 10 to the minus 6. So I could also write that as minus J 0 0.3183. And then that would be micro ohms. You could also write it as 318.3 milli ohms. That would also be perfectly acceptable. Actually, that's not right. That's not right. Sorry. Um, that would be nano ohms, right? Because uh, we could either go to have I got that wrong? I've got that. I've got it wrong. I'm sorry. So 10 to the minus 6, 
let's do this properly, sorry. So to get that in 10 to the minus 6, we want to move the decimal point that way, don't we? Sorry about that. So it's 30, well that's, that's a better way of doing it. So that's by 10 to the minus 6 ohms, which is minus J, 31.83 micro ohms. Okay, let's get question 2. Mm, not here. Dan, what did you get for question two? You didn't do it. Don't. You should try it at least. You got no idea? Okay. Uh, Maxwell, any idea? No? Okay. Kevin here. Kevin is apparently not here. Is Marcus here? Marcus is not here. Jack's here. That's correct. Okay. Minus J, 2.6 by 10 to the minus 5 ohms. Okay, let's do that in MATLAB. So this time we've got uh, omega 2. Right, and it's 600 by 2 by pi. And ZC2 is 1 on J omega 2 times C1 and we should be able to see that yeah 2.652 by 10 to the minus 5 okay let's go on to the next one and somebody else AJ, what did you get for number three? Thirty-one thousand four hundred and fifteen. Okay, let's see what. So it's ten. Oops. L one is ten. And we've got the omega one. So ZL one is J omega one L one. And that looks pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. J is oops. J is the square root of minus 1. Right? Right, so uh, the, when I talked about that, we've been using I all the way through to talk about current. So, elect well, electrical engineers, right, tend to use J for current. Mathematicians and mechanical engineers tend to use I, but uh, electrical people tend to use J. Okay. You're welcome. Okay, let's. Uh, that looks pretty good. So let's. Uh, somebody else. Not here. Daniel. Number four. No? Sorry. Oh, sorry. I... Too damned. I... I should hold up the picture. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Number four, yeah. And 
again just make sure you put a J in there right so this is just the same as the last one except with uh, Cl2 equals 1J times omega 2 this time okay that looks good and yeah to four sig figs three seven seven zero is good okay let's go with number five and I don't think Jocelyn's here Abigo can you tell us number five negative 1.592 sorry by 10 to the negative 2 okay so let's so 10 microfarad so this is a little different so our omega 3 is 2 pi there and our C2 is 10 by 10 to the minus 6. And so our ZC3 equals 1 on J omega 3 C2 and I'm going to have to go format long to get enough significant figures and 0 Yeah, it looks good. Again, I'd probably rewrite that as uh, minus J fifteen point nine two and go with milli ohms. Okay. Same sort of thing, but this time we've got an inductor. Justin here. There we go, Justin. You didn't get this far? Okay. So let me let me do it anyway. So we've got um, ten milli Henry. Uh, how do we get there? reason it's not letting me change focus to there there we go so this is a ZL3 and it's going to be J Omega three times now it's L two equals what was it ten by ten to the minus three ten milli henries so what have we got we've got uh, sixty two thousand eight hundred and thirty two Six hundred sixty two point eight three. Is that right? Sixty two point eight three. J sixty two point eight three kilo ohms. 
Okay, so the next one's a little trickier. Let me... Uh, Nicholas, haven't got that far. Okay, so let me let me try that one. Is any, actually, has anybody gotten that far? Nobody's gotten that far. Okay, have another have another couple of minutes and try and get uh, try and do that one before I. So this one's a bit trickier because you've got two of them now. going to take another slurp. Was at a meeting yesterday with the uh, between the I the student IEEE club, the Institute of Elect Electronics Engineers, and the ASME student club, and they're looking at uh, doing a uh, a joint project. They're wanting to put together a. Um, uh, basically a remote control or potentially autonomous plane. They've decided they want to do a plane rather than a drone because drones tend to be a little easier. And so they're, uh, they're, they're making it a little, a little harder by uh, going for a, an aircraft. With the, so the reason, the reason drones are sometimes a bit easier is because all you usually need with a drone is lift and you've got lift with all the usually with the four or sometimes eight motors propellers just with a to control the plane you've got to do things a little bit more you've got to understand the lift from the wings you've got to understand what uh, changing the uh, I don't know how to pronounce it probably ailerons the the flaps how, how do you change direction with uh, 
with just cha changing the trim on the flaps. You still also get power, obviously. But, uh, so I recommend seeking out those two clubs if you're interested. Uh, the uh, chair of the um, IEEE Student Club is uh, Caleb Gardner. He's a computer science guy, actually. And uh, ASME is Matt somebody or other. I didn't quite get his last name, Matt I Isom, something like that. But uh, I'll try and find out the, uh, the contact details. Okay, do we have an answer? Anybody? Nine point nine five one by ten sorry. One point five nine one, sorry. One point five nine one by ten to the negative two. Okay. Okay, well let's see what I get. So my first thought is we've got to put them in parallel, right? So we'll have a capacitor and we'll have an inductor and we've got a 10 microfarad and we have a 10 millihenry. And Z total is going to be 1 on, 1 on ZC plus 1 on ZL. Okay. And so ZC is 1 on J omega, which is 2 pi times a million. Uh, times 10 by 10 to the minus 6 and ZL is J omega 10 by 10 to the minus 3 okay let's see what we can do with that so now we've got uh, Let's say you call it C7 is 10 by 10 to the minus minus 6 and L7 10 by 10 to the minus 3. The L7 is J omega 7 L7, which we didn't define omega 7, so let's define that. 2 times pi times a million. Let's just do it that way. So there's the L7. ZC7 is 1 on 1J times omega 7 times C7. I think that looks right. And then Z total is one on one on uh, ZC seven plus one on ZL seven. And that looks pretty pretty good. We've got a minus sign. Other than that, so one of the tricky things One of the tricky things with RLC circuits 
is that when you have a circuit like this where you have a capacitor in series with an inductor it's perfectly possible for ZC plus ZL to equal zero, right? Because the ZC is going to be minus J something and the ZL is going to be plus J something. So it's perfectly possible to have devices with a non-negligible impedance that when combined together give you zero impedance and we're not going to talk about them in this course but there's a a circuit that makes use of that zero impedance called a tank circuit and it lets you it lets you do some uh, interesting things particularly um, it lets you build oscillators right because this is only happening at one frequency and if you want to build a, a circuit that oscillates then a tank circuit is the way is one way to build an oscillating circuit okay any questions about that right I think the main problem here is just getting the information in to your calculators and then getting the information out. I'm cheating a bit by using uh, by using um, MATLAB. Okay, uh, we've been going for about an hour, so let's do the usual thing and have a have a ten minute break. When we come back, we'll uh, we'll tackle question two.
Okay, so if you haven't started already, have a go at uh, question two. And it's solved for the mesh currents. Right? So that means try and do mesh analysis. And I've already defined, you don't have to use the definitions I've put here. Um, like I said, I tend to, without any other information, I tend to make all my mesh currents go, um, go clockwise. But you don't have to do that, provided you're consistent and you apply the passive sign convention at least to all the passive devices, and we're all good.
So let's uh, make a start. Michael, how do we start this one? Okay, so if you can give me the KVL for I1, we try that. Right. 10 angle 60, yeah. Minus J5. Right, so we've got to have the uh, the current in there, right, to get a voltage. Right, so it's I1, and then plus 6, and what's the current for the, for the going through the 6 ohm? Well, it's, it's I1 minus I2. Right? And that's all we need, so that's all equal to 0. So there's a start. So let me get uh, somebody else to do the uh, KVL for I2. Ahmad, do you want to give me the KVL for I2? J I2 uh, I want to, I think there's a yep yeah. Yep. Uh-huh. Plus 6i2. Yeah, we can split it out already. That's all right. And that equals 0. Okay. That looks pretty good. So now... Uh, we got Alex here. I think so. William, do you want to tell us, I don't know, distribute in group like terms with uh, the I1? Uh huh. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna say minus six I two, yep. Negative ten angle sixty degrees. Sounds good. You're right. Negative. I did say it, I just didn't write it. Thank you. Jason, can you do the distribute and group like terms for I2 KVL, please. Ten plus two J times I2, yeah. Minus six O equals zero. Sounds good. And Aritro, can you uh, let us uh, help us put that into a, a matrix, please? Uh huh. Ten plus J two. Yep. Uh huh. Yep, that makes sense. Yep. And zero. Okay. That uh. That seems reasonable. 
so let me uh, let me try and plug that in to MATLAB. No, where's it going? Where's MATLAB gone? There's MATLAB gone. So let's just make a new thing. And this is uh, tutorial four. And we want Q2. So our A matrix. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do it the way you have to do it on your calculators, right? So that's going to be 6 plus 5 minus 6, 0. Minus 5, 6, 0, minus 6, minus 6, 0, 10, minus 2, 0, minus 6, plus 2, 10. Right? So this is the the way to do complex um, matrices without using complex numbers. All right, so remember the the trick was to replace six minus j five with a two by two matrix six minus five. Five, six. Okay, and I think I've got the right. Oh, I got the wrong number there. That should have been a plus five, not a plus six. Let's just check I've got everything else right. It seems okay. And then at my B matrix, this time it's going to be a, a 2 by 4. So it's going to be minus 5 plus 8.66. And let's just put a semicolon there. Uh, minus 8.66 minus 5. And the trouble with real valued numbers is you've got to, particularly with zero, you're right, I do. Thank you. Just to make sure. Don't think I need one on the last line. Oops. There we go. Let's just try and run that. That looks okay there. And A, just checking this, the symmetry of each 2x2 two two block, looks okay. And then I should just be able to say that... Uh, is RF A, B, B, not V. And if we make that big enough... Right, we should get a 4x4 four four unit matrix in the first four columns. And then the check is that we have the same symmetry in the last two columns. Right? And it's not the last column we're interested in this time, it's the second last column. So the answer is going to be 0.9845 minus J 1.741 for I1 
and for I2 it's going to be 0 0.3671 minus J1.118. Let's, uh, let's see if we can put them over here, maybe. There we go. So that that's what the... Uh, so I1 is equal to 0.9845 minus J1.741. Amps, I2 equals 0 0.3671 minus J1.118 also amps. Everybody okay with that? Maybe. Go back to the MATLAB. Okay, so I got that from a retro, and basically all he's done is change minus 10 angles 60 degrees to uh, rectangular coordinates, right? So it's going to be minus 10 times cosine. plus uh, J sine because um, MATLAB by default uses uh, angles in radians I've got uh, I've got to convert 60 degrees to radians by dividing by 180 and multiplying by pi and that's where that comes from Okay, so we have the right, we have ten angle sixty. Right, and what we've got is the real part and the imaginary part. And we've got some vector up here. that's 10 long and it's at an angle of 60 degrees going counterclockwise with the horizontal axis right so that's what that 10 angle 60 degrees means Yeah, we're just turning it into into components. So then, we if we if we look down here onto the real axis, that location is ten cosine sixty degrees. Again, converted into radians because MATLAB's in radians. And then this one here, the imaginary component is ten sine sixty degrees. You're welcome. So, apart from the added complexity of complex numbers, it's exactly what you've done already before with mesh analysis. 
Okay. So let's spend some another, I don't know, ten ten minutes on this one. Try try doing this one. I'll give it a uh, another time.
Okay. So let's uh, have a go at this one. And my uh, student list has reset, so you'll, even if you've had a question asked already today, you're probably uh, back in, well, you are back in the list. And funnily enough, Eritro, you get uh, the first question. So, where do we start? Exactly, right? So we've got a freebie. Exactly. So I1 equals 400 angle 45 degrees microamps. Okay, let me just label them so we know the names. Thank you. Let me uh, pick on someone else. So, Maxwell, what's next? Sorry? Right, so we, we want to do I2. So, w what's the... So, we're doing mesh analysis again, right? So, what's the KVL for the I2 mesh? Not sure? Okay, let me get someone else. Daniel in the middle. Thirty nine hundred I two. I2 minus I1, sounds good. Sorry, negative 4.33 plus 2.5J. Okay, let me... Just write that a bit better. Okay, that seems that seems pretty good. And let's get somebody else for the KVL for I three. William, can you? Tell us about the KVL for I3. Alright, I'm just going to expand it out to I3. Yep. Equals the 5 angle 30. And we can just say that that's equal to 4.33. Now, I think that should be a minus there, is that right? If that's minus 5 angle 30, so that should be plus J 2.5. Okay. So let's get somebody else. Don't think Marcus is here. AJ, what next? I'm 
not sure. So I think what I would do is I would probably use the fact that I know I won and substitute it into there, right? That way the KVL for I2 is only in I2 and the KVL for I3 is only in I3. So I actually don't have to do a matrix. I can just solve each one of those independently. Right? So let's... So 400... Uh, angle 45, so that's 400... Remember the other way to do the conversion is to use exponential j theta, right? e to the i theta is the same as cosine theta plus j sine theta. So that's 280. To 2.8 and remember that's microamps I'll leave out the by 10 to the minus 6 for now so let's substitute that in here and I think we get um, 3900 minus J1000 times I2 and it's J1000 times, sorry, minus J1000 times minus I1 so that's plus J1000 times I1 but if we take it, because it's a constant we take it over to the other side, it's going to be minus j1000 times i1, which is this number here. And then i3 is just 4.33 plus J 2.5 divided by J 4700 and I'm now going to bring this down here so that I2 is I'm not going to do any calculations because I will get it wrong. And this would be 8 and by 10 to the minus 6 to get it there and that that's all over 3900 minus J1000. Okay, so let's see if we can pull that into MATLAB and get some numbers out of it. Maybe. Uh, so we'll go for a new. And this one's tutorial four, but this time it's Q3. So I2 equals So I'm just going to do the calculation directly, right? So our 
minus 5 times exponential 1j times 30 on 180 times pi. That's the minus 4.33 minus j 2.5. And then minus j 1000 times What do we get? 400 times exponential 1j times 45 on 180 times pi times 10 to the minus 6 to get the right units because we want. So that's the numerator for I2 and then the denominator is just 3900 minus J 1000. And then I3 is again our 5 e to the i theta. Divided by J 4700. Just be very careful. Note that there's a difference between what I just typed and that. One is 4700 squared bigger than the other one, right, because of the order of precedence of operators. I do the division by 1j and then I do the multiplication by 4700. So in order to divide by j4700 I need to have parentheses around the, uh, the denominator. Okay, so then we've got, um, what's that? Uh, one, two, minus 802, J minus 919.2. microamps and it's 531.9 minus J 921.3 now I thought there was a I thought there was a way to do, there we go, format four digits, so format short inch, let's try that one, All right, so now I get my engineering notation, and I get my powers of 10, being uh, divisible by 3. I'll just leave it there, it's okay. And just remember that that is in, well that's in amps, because we've got the power of 6 there. Okay.
but didn't answer the question. Very good. So the question is, solve for ix. And there's ix, and it looks like ix equals i3 minus i2. Okay? So let's just do that in in here. So, oops. I wish I could figure out why it doesn't like me uh, doing that. Anyway, ix equals i3, i3 minus i2. And let's run that. So now we've got a slight quandary. We've got the real part in milliamps, and we've got the imaginary part in microamps, right? So I'd probably say the whole thing in microamps. So it'd be uh, 1334 minus J uh, 2.095 microamps. And let's just rewrite that, so... Right, so let's just rewrite that, so ix equals 1, 3, 3, 4, minus j 2.095 microamps. Okay. How would I do it outside of MATLAB? Oh, using a calculator? Yeah. Um, so it's, it's a bit tricky. I would just... I mean, you should... Mo I think the... The 83 and 84 have a, a sort of a stack there, right? So you can you can calculate you can calculate that one, and then you can divide it by that. That should be okay. I think the trickier one is this one, right? But again, I would tend to just calculate the the numerator first, that one, and then minus that one and then do the division by the denominator afterwards. Right. Um, let me see... I... Let me see if I can put together a video that shows you how to do it, right? Um, sorry, what did you do first? that oh okay so that that's another way you could do it right so um, calculating this part here let's go with red calculating the the numerator it's probably best off being in rectangular coordinates but calculating the division it's probably best off being in polar coordinates, right? Because if you've got um, R1 e to the j theta 1 divided by R2 e to the j theta 2, then that's just equal to R1 on R2 uh, e to the j theta 1 minus theta 2. Right. The polar form is much easier to deal with when you're dividing, whereas when you're adding the rectangular form, you just add the real part to the real part, add the imaginary part to the imaginary part. But let me uh, see if I can... So this is question three. I'll see if I can 
steal my uh, daughter's uh, calculator and do a video showing how to do it on that. So the other option is if you do want to try and use MATLAB, A, you can download it for free, right? As a Central Connecticut student, you have access to it for free. The other way to do it is if you go to apps.ccsu.edu and you go to the Maybe. Oh, where's it gone? There it is. So go to desktops, go to engineering and science. Maybe. Oh, maybe I haven't installed that one. Let me uh, try that again. You should be able to do it just in the browser too. For some reason it's trying to uh let's try it again from scratch. Ah. I thought I had installed Citrix here, and apparently I haven't. Let's try and open it again. There we go. 2.8 stars, that's not very good. So what you should be able to do is run the, the, the engineering desktop. And uh, run that. You should, I should have clicked use the light version to, to use it in the browser. I think the problem is I have this Citrix workspace app installed on my desktop computer at home. I think that's what I was... Uh... confused about. I'm surprised how long this is taking. It's, um, normally here on campus we've got uh, pretty good Wi-Fi connectivity. Okay. Ooh, it's not available. Of course. I have never seen that. That's really quite bad. No, it's not available. So what should happen is that should start up a desktop for you. Anyway, like I said, I've downloaded it um, so if you want to install it at home just 
search for uh, just search for MATLAB CCSU and you should be able to get to this page and it'll tell you how to uh, go there there's the uh, MATLAB the MathWorks uh, CCSU page let me uh, put that in here too okay so let's continue on and we want to solve this one using nodal analysis So let's, I'll give this one uh, about 15 minutes and then I'll start asking people.
we have that on, that's no good. Um, and we get that. And then what? Then we've got to divide by minus 1 on 3900, minus 1 on 220, plus 1 on J1000. Let's see if we can do that one. And do another new. And this is Q4. So our VB equals minus 15 times exponential 1J times 60 on 180 times pi divided by 3900 plus 5 times exponential 1J times 30 on 180 times pi divided by 220 and then divided by minus 1 on 3900 3900 minus 1 on 220 plus 1 on and remember the uh, parentheses around that And so it's minus 3.879 Right, so that's minus 3.879 plus, oops, minus, minus J0.8651 and our units are volts. Now what I haven't been doing is I haven't been converting those rectangular coordinates back into polar coordinates, right? Um, let's just have a look at what that means for this one. So the way in MATLAB to do it, the magnitude is the absolute value, and the angle is angle and but that's in radians so in order to get it in degrees we divide by pi and multiply by 180 so that's 3.974 angle minus 167 Right, so that's going to be equal to 3.974 angle minus 167 degrees. Okay. As I said, Apart from transients and three-phase circuits, we've already done everything. Mesh analysis, nodal analysis, superposition, Fevin and Norton. Next week I'm going to talk about the uh, uh, transient analysis and three-phase circuits. 
um, and then we'll con we'll do some more of that tutorial. That tutorial, the, the, the second one I handed out, is a lot longer. You'll see that the uh, some of the questions have four circuits associated with them. Those questions come from last year's final. So this year's final is going to be different, but it's not going to be any difference in complexity. Right, it's going to look pretty similar to that. Um, I think I'd rather get you used to that sort of problem. I don't think we're going to have time in class to go through and have a, a detailed uh, run through of every question on the paper. I'm happy to go through any question on the paper. I just don't think we're going to have time to go through every question on the paper. But we'll, we'll see how we go. Does anybody have any questions about what we've done with the tutorial? I'm hoping it's useful, right? I think it's better doing practice problems and coming, everybody individually coming to grips with the math um, rather than me talking at you all the time. I think I have to talk at you a little bit, but uh, I think you're better off getting to grips with the material yourselves individually. Okay, I am done, um, at least with talking at you. Uh, if you've already done everything you think you need to do for the superposition lab, feel free to leave. If you want to finish up on the superposition lab, feel free to stay. I'll stay here until one o'clock, ten past one, so we can get that done. There will be another lab next week, um, the Thevenin and Norton lab. Um, that one may take a little time, so we'll 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 see how we go. But, uh, let's leave it there, as far as the lecture is concerned.